Gaming on Linux has become really good in the past couple of years. Proton, Valve's compatibility layer for Windows games, as well as their efforts with the Steam Deck and their custom Linux distribution SteamOS 3 are just some of the reasons on why game compatibility is just no longer an issue. However, there is just that one section in gaming that unfortunately is not really maintained all that well. Competitive titles that use anti-cheats. And this is not just an issue to the ultra-competitive ones like League of Legends or Valorant, but also slower games like Battlefield, Call of Duty, FIFA or Fortnite. And what do all of these games have in common? Well, they are just very popular, offer great ways to play with your friends and measure your skills against other gamers on public servers or in tournaments. So what if you want to use Linux but also play these games? Which of them already work? What are the chances that other titles are being made compatible as well? And what can we do to improve the current situation? Well, let's find out, shall we? Like I'm gonna be honest, not being able to play every single game doesn't really bother me personally anymore, since I for once don't play as many games as I used to and when I do, it's compatible titles anyway. That being said, however, I do experience the occasional craving to play something else, something that just isn't supported. A more recent version of Call of Duty Zombies, Valorant, one of the Battlefield titles I own, and of course Apex Legends. It's not enough, of course, to make me want to install Windows just for them, since I really like my Linux operating system. And I don't really want a third party messing around with my boot partition or just waste a bunch of storage on my drives. So I always wondered, are there still any competitive games out there for Linux? And if there are, are they somewhat similar to previous mentioned titles? Well, let's take a look at some of those. Consulting the website Are We Anti-Cheat Yet tells us that we do have a couple of options. Halo, both the Master Chief Collection and Infinite are supported and they both work great. However, while Halo does have a competitive scene, its pacing and how it generally feels is not to everyone's taste. So what about something that feels a lot closer to a Battlefield or Call of Duty? Well, I think the closest game to that, both in terms of look and feel, is probably the finals. However, it's of course its own game with its own mechanics. This was actually the first time that I ever played it, and I gotta say, while well, there certainly is a learning curve, it's quite good and feels really nice. That being said, however, just like Apex Legends when it was still compatible, there are times when the finals just break without a warning due to an update to their anti-cheat, and it's usually up to Valve or the Linux community to fix it. What's also worth noting is that Valve has not yet taken any real action against developers or publishers removing anti-cheat support for Linux from their games. So if you plan to stay on Linux indefinitely, I do recommend to not spend any money in those games, which unfortunately contributes to the argument that Linux gamers don't really bring in any money, which is kind of true. Only if a publisher assures long-lasting support, then we can support them financially. Just make a statement, it's not that hard. Anyway, so that's that. Let's continue with games that have an overall more tactical and slower pacing. What about MOBAs and FIFA-like games? Well, since Riot introduced their Vanguard anti-cheat to League of Legends, the same one that keeps Valorant from being unplayable on Linux, it just no longer works. Interestingly, and something that I wasn't even aware of, they did make a special version of Vanguard for macOS after they initially kept the game on the old one. It's not the same thing as the Windows kernel driver, but rather integrated into the runtime, which then sort of hooks into macOS own anti-temper measures. However, Linux has of course received zero effort from them just yet, and it remains unplayable. Really unfortunate, since the next closest game that I know personally of is probably Dota 2. That game does run fine, and it is a good alternative for it if you just want another MOBA. But it is definitely no League of Legends. Speaking of games that just work on Linux, Counter-Strike 2. Apart from some performance problems, especially those stutters, which can oddly enough be fixed via a starting command, it really only allows you to play regular matchmaking or some third-party public servers. If you want to get serious in it though, then Linux is unfortunately not for you, since any third-party clients like Faceit or ESEA use their own Windows-only anti-cheat. So while you can play CS2 just fine on Linux in general, you won't be able to do it that competitively, and you probably also can't participate in any tournaments if a third-party anti-cheat is involved. And this is a real problem, but ironically there is a simple solution to this that doesn't even involve making these anti-cheats compatible with Linux at first. Dedicated game servers! A long time ago, most servers were community maintained and only accessible via an in-game server browser. You know, similar to Counter-Strike's one. However, the more competitive those games became, the more effort was put into bringing some of this competitiveness and rankings straight into the games themselves. 
This does it make easier for the user to participate in those rankings, but it also migrated most of the control to the publishers or whoever else is hosting the servers in the background, and community browsers were mostly removed altogether. However, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have Linux-exclusive servers anymore. Before crossplay became the norm in online gaming, each platform used to have their own lobbies and leaderboards. This can be done today as well, as long as the rankings are being kept separated, so that if Linux was easier to cheat on, it doesn't reflect on the other platforms. Not really ideal, but at least we could play the games. But hey, isn't running game servers exclusively for Linux more expensive, since it's a whole different platform that needs to be maintained? Well, the answer to that is also simple. No, actually. Essentially, all game servers are virtual machines or containers, and dynamically scale depending on the load of users. If more gamers want to play simultaneously, more of those machines are being deployed, and if the player numbers drop, then the surplus is being shut down. So if there aren't enough Linux users to spin up any virtual machine, then no, it's not more expensive to provide Linux support. And even if there were many playing, it would be the same amount of cost if those gamers were playing on Windows. It's the same virtual machine, just with a different filter for the operating system. Alright, but what about crossplay then? Well, easy. You do crossplay on the platform that objectively performs the worst. Say you want to play with your friends on Windows. Well, instead of you joining the Windows lobby, they just join the Linux one instead. This is already a practice in crossplay in general, whereas very often console players join a PC lobby or the other way around, depending on which control scheme is easier to play with. So there is realistically speaking not really any downside to providing Linux exclusive servers. Let's take Destiny 2 for example. The worst thing that could happen is that the Linux servers are too empty to properly play PvP against each other. Other than that, the game would be fully functional, and also provides a much easier transition to Linux if they want to switch away from Windows. Yeah, maybe those games will have problems with maintaining player numbers on Linux. However, that's still better than not being to play at all. To get more people to game on Linux to improve game compatibility, we need to make those games accessible to them, even if that means that Linux players can only play against other Linux players, with a lesser or even non-existent anti-cheat at all. The rest will develop naturally, just like the use of anti-cheat measures did. But we need something. I wanted to make this video to show you a couple of things. Yes, there are already some games that work on Linux, but not perfectly. And that the best way to ease the entry barrier to Linux is to just provide Linux exclusive matchmaking before we get into all the difficult stuff like anti-cheat and all that. Can cheaters exploit these loopholes and pretend to be on Linux? Well, they maybe aren't actually. Sure, but they will be put into Linux servers anyway. Again, not ideal, but better than nothing. Everything is better than nothing, and I believe it's in the interest of everyone, both consumers, but also the sellers, publishers or whoever else is involved, that these games are being accessible on as many platforms as possible. Especially if they would already run fine. So please, Linux exclusive servers, see how they develop and in time we can take measures against cheaters together. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think about this whole topic? Do you agree that game servers that are exclusive to Linux can help with the migration over from Windows? Do you think that we should get the same amount of intrusion from an anti-cheat solution just like on Windows? Please let us know down in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching, and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.